This episode is sponsored by another one of our key backers on this NAS Charger project, Nick Williams Visual Talk. Nick pops up later in the series as he helps Sam fit the Arc Audio stereo system to the vehicle. Go to nwvt.co.uk to find out more about the wonderful automotive photography Nick does and look up NWVT on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter where you will find some great shots of the NAS Charger and lots more. And just a reminder, while you are on social media, please follow Hard Up Garage to get alerts about future videos and extra content. You can also get alerts if you subscribe to us here on YouTube. Just look up Hard Up Garage and click on the bell icon. And why not click on that like button and write us a comment? It would be great to hear from you. Mandrolic is good though, right? <laughs> Mandrolic is always good exercise. And you know, the most important thing here is safety. This car was made to go on attack track at 200 miles an hour. I came up with the crazy concept of mounting a second generation Dodge Charger body on a Chevy powered NASCAR and with the help from others, this NAS Charger came into the world and then almost got me sent to jail, but more on that later on in the series. We hope you agree, this vehicle is all about looking mean and following up that look with big horsepower. This is the ninth episode showing how we made my NAS Charger concept a reality. So, if you haven't seen earlier episodes, you'll need to know where we are on this build. Well, after some debate with himself, Adam finally decided on where we should cut the NASCAR in half, and we did just that. That'd be that then. <laughs> I feel good. Let's break a NASCAR like we should. Last episode, we roughly lined up the NASCAR chassis with the longer Dodge Charger body. So we are 99% sure my crazy plan will work, but we still have to line everything up properly and decide how they will marry up. For a little while, we had the front of the NASCAR and the back of the NASCAR on either ends of my garage, which obviously looked quite bizarre. We have tack welded in almost 7 inches of pipe on the NASCAR chassis between both halves because we think that's the correct length we need to elongate the NASCAR to make it fit under the Dodge Charger body. Then I have purple ratchet straps effectively keeping each half of the chassis together as we strive to join everything up. Yeah, I think what we have to do is weld some tabs on the Charger, you know, or rest on the NASCAR, but you want it lower than that. That's where I want it, like that, look, look at this back wheel. That's where I want it. So what I think's happening is our NASCAR tab, mm -hmm. tub, yeah? yeah. Mm -hmm. It's coming down, yeah. it's catching our tub and then moving it. Yeah. Yeah? You mean the rear wheels? The, the, not the rear wheels, the actual wheel arch cover on the NASCAR. Yeah. I think it's coming down and then it's levelling itself out with what's in the charge already. Yeah. Well, not, yeah, I know you want the height there, but that's, well, that's on touching it. Again. That is on it. So it's got to come back an inch, isn't it? Yeah. You, you want the right height about there. But like you said, we can do, get the seals lined up with the NASCAR to the charger, and then you can adjust the height to get it sitting where you yeah. want it. I think, look, in there, look, we're sat. Yeah. I think the NASCAR wheel arch covers are touching the charger. I definitely, look, look here, yeah. they're bending down. Yeah. Right? So we'll either have to, we're gonna to have to cut some more stuff off the charger. Okay? Really? Because that's our problem. That is a look, if you look here, mm. we're we're either gonna to have to trim that white piece off and weld it back in later. Right. Or make a new piece. Or make a new piece. Because the problem is I kinda of wanted to keep that because it was very yeah. original. But what you do is that you then join up the NASCAR to the charger with a fresh piece from what right. you've already. Both of those got. pieces that are pointing down, if you come here and say, Adam. Uh, our main problem, yeah? Mm -hmm. So look, 
See them? Yeah, I can see it. Let's yeah. cut them off, yeah? Right. Let's get them out of the equation. Your one is touching a bit and mine isn't. No. So my body, the body can come, needs to come your way. Yeah. Half an inch, which mm. we can wiggle and manipulate. Yeah. Yeah? Mm. What we need to do, I think, is put some tabs on the car. That you, I, know, I know you're saying that. And it's just going to sit on it. Until we it. know where our level point is, we can't do that. No. Let's take it back up. Let's right. cut them bits off. And achieve mm. something. Awkward fun. See, yeah, what, what's happening is the charger is going down, sorry, the last part's going down here and the charger's going up pretty much there. Look, that's freed up again now. Exactly where we want it. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So, them bits are pushing the NASCAR forward. Mm. So let's get them off, yeah? If we well, get a wiggle, see how to touch our straps? See, you touch them here, look. That is, that is exactly what I want. That is perfect. That exact mm. is where we want the car, yeah? Right. So what's happening is it's coming down, it's touching them bits of metal, mm -hmm. and the body's going, Ugh, yeah. and that's why we're having loads and loads of problems. Well, why, if, why don't you put something on here, Yeah. so that the, the NASCAR stays at that height at the back. That's fine. So when we go, when you go down with the charger, yeah. it lays on those pieces of metal, won't go any lower, and then the front will drop down to where you want it. Get them bits out of the way, yeah? Right. Drop it down, mm -hmm. level our car out to the seal perfectly, yeah. see where they are, mark mm -hmm. it, then work the tabs. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, but we, yeah, we, do, we will do that, because if you've got the tab at the back, it that's in the right place. Don't get more worry about that, and then we worry about getting yeah. stuff in the right in the front. <laughs> This bit. That it's just was on there. Just now, all of this piece here was yeah. rubbing along that. Yeah, but this side I had an inch gap, so I could have pulled right. it away. This bit here is digging in here. Yeah, but you're doing it the wrong way round. You want to take the stuff off the NASCAR because that is an integral isn't an integral strength part of the, of the shell. So why don't we cut that? Something? Is no, you cut the NASCAR. Okay, cool. You're right. I'm wrong. You're Be awesome. I'm rubbish. Because that's keeping the body shell and the rear wings where we want them. You start cutting that out, the wings are going to be trapped. Right, so how many inches? Well, I reckon just take two inches off them. Because the thing is, you can, like we said earlier, oh, you can put a nice aluminium strip to the shape of this. I think we're going to need more than two inches because this is the bit that's cool, touching. Man. So I think we're going to have to go like three and a half. So I marked out the chop line and then we cut off the NASCAR's wheel arches and even trimmed the support structure that we have put in place to keep the charger's body in shape. Time for another test fitting and things were looking positive. Then Adam welded in the support tabs he mentioned earlier. Setting fire to the car in the process. I wanted my creation to be smoking hot, but that wasn't exactly what I had in mind. Really Adam? Naughty boy. By this point we've removed the radiator, but the front fitment wasn't bad either, and so, with the position of the Dodge Charger body on the NASCAR now resolved, it was time to then bridge the gap in the NASCAR by fabricating extended side seals on the chassis. This was done over the next few days before I turned to Craig from SVG Motorsport to help me with the more complicated roll cage. 
we're quite far into the build, but we've hit a bit of a wall. And you know, the most important thing here is safety. This car was made to go around a track at 200 miles an hour, and it was made to hit the wall at 200 miles an hour, and also leave the occupants safe. Um, I could possibly, in the space of two weeks, build a roll cage, which would look pretty, but safety's paramount. And that's why I've got Craig here. Craig's from SVG Motorsport, and he is here with his Bailey Bender, and realistically, you can't pay for safety, can you? You know, no. that is the most important thing. No, not at all. So uh, yeah, Bailey's here, Bailey's here, Craig's here, and uh, it's all about making sure that I'm not cutting corners here, I'm not saving money. Being hard up is one thing and being dead's another. So uh, thank you for being here, man. You're welcome. As I was marrying up a race car with a muscle car body, I actually wanted to keep the vast majority of the roll cage as a feature in the finished vehicle. Plus, it's a great safety feature anyway. Our test fits had proved that the height of the cage was a slight issue, but the cage would have to be drastically altered if I wanted my doors to shut, which obviously I did. Craig has to bend a lot of these pipes to allow it to fit into the car properly. So we're going to be cutting these welds here as neatly as we can so we can reuse the pipe, remove this part here, including this angle section. If I don't do it right now, it can take a lot longer in the long run for Craig to sort out my mistakes. So uh, yeah, let's get it done. So I got busy with the grinder doing as Craig asked me because Craig has made more roll cages at SVG than I have had at dinners. I was paying for his extensive expertise, so that meant that he was in charge. The diagonal bar that's already on the car, we're gonna make a small sleeve that we can put in the original car and reposition the old main hoop back on the diagonal, drop the body down oh, yeah. and see how our clearance is from the top of the roll cage tube to the top of the body. Obviously we want it as close as possible. If this doesn't fit, then there's no point playing around with it, we'll just make another one. So we'll do this bit now, save us time later. changed and you wouldn't have done that if you kept the weapons no. on. Do you want to drop the body down now? Yes. Ultimately put the body down, see how this fits the roof. Yep. And then, so uh, it might fit nicely, might it? You never know. If it doesn't, it goes in the bin. Good fit. That's what you want though, yeah. I can come up a tad. Right, if you come up just a little bit, I just want to see where this all refits. This bend here yep. um, is catching the top of the rear port panel. Okay. Whereas this bend here isn't. Okay. Which tends to suggest the whole cage is slightly drifted yeah, towards, towards this the driver's side, side of the driver. safety, yeah. Yeah. So some of this might not actually be symmetrical. It won't be, will it? Which is quite nice because now Doesn't matter, what we do is not gonna show up quite yep. so much. Um, so what it would mean is these rear diagonals that we've put in yeah. um, are not going to work where they are. Okay, but they can move slightly, can't we they? We can move them this way a little bit. Yeah. Can we cut like a centimetre out of that bottom sway bar? This one? Yeah. Yeah. And then that whole piece will come this way, a tad, which is what we need. Yeah. That'll bring it over a centimetre and it'll drop it down a centimetre. Yeah. Come down a tad. Yep. Right, let me. Oh, yeah. Alright, I'll get there. It's better, isn't it? It's not bad, yeah. It's good. Cool. So we're using as much as the original as we That's can. what we've got to go with, you know. We're not here to it. we're not here to take anything away from it. We yeah. still needs to be a NASCAR at the end of the day. That's you know? right. Right, do you want me to cut that off then? Yeah, if we cut that one off, cut the welds off as close Make as you can. Make it all look pretty again, yeah? Um, we may even be able to use this tube somewhere else.
with my pet pigeons who have made my garage their home cooing overhead. We raised the charger up so we could get access easily to refit the roll cage and see how our alterations would fit underneath the charger. If all was good, it would be time to tack well what we've been manipulating in place. That is really good. That is a close fit. That is a bloody close fit. Mind the back of this one. Oh yeah, I'm going to have to stop it about there. Can't oh, really do expertise on it. If you, um, actually no, drop it down a little bit more and I'll rock it a bit. Yeah, we're, we're quite clear to be fair. Okay. I'll push it there. Oh, that's cleared both the chassis legs as well. Lovely. Yep. We are. Can't be far away from where you want it to be, is it? That's sexual, isn't it? Yeah. What? Yeah. Let me check my seals. Make sure my seals are lined up. Oh, the pigeon. I ain't got the to kill him. Alright, mind your eyes. Yep. Yeah. We were only tack welding the rear of the cage in place in case we had to redo a part later. Grinding off a tack weld is far easier than unpicking a seam weld, that's for sure. But with the rear in place, our attention centered on other areas we needed to build. We would have to employ Craig's specialist equipment to do these parts of the cage. Right, this is our uh, manually operated Bailey bender. Okay. Um, it's for predominantly roll cages, yep. but you can use it for making chassis, um, all sorts of structures. You could probably make the whole NASCAR on that. Wow. Um, it's just one of those things. They do lots of different models. They do hydraulic ones and things like that, but the, the price goes up. Mandrolic is good though, right? <laughs> Mandrolic is always good exercise. So what you're going to do here right. is show us basically how, show me yep. and all these people how to bend a piece of pipe precisionly right okay um so what you do this is a special roll cage tube yep. um it's cds okay. uh, it's a very high strength bendable tube okay um you don't want anything that's too high a strength or it won't bend yep. it'll just kink or break or yeah and, and that's just not and what what's the thickness of this this is two and a half millimeters thick yep so that's 12 gauge and that's at 44.5 uh, it's 44.6 yep. something whatever it is um yeah inch and three quarters yep as near as hell um, so what we'll do with this one, we know from the previous bend that we did on the door pillar, yep. um, we'll put this tube in, I'll get you to bend this one up. Okay. Uh, we know roughly what angle we need, okay. um, because all of this is a bit floaty at the minute, yep. we can always chop it and add it no and worries. change it from there. Perfect. So basically, yep. you put this one in, This is a because this is a mandrel bender, it will keep the shape. Perfect. So you can't have a roll cage that's kinked. No. Uh, it's got to keep the shape of the tube. Although we might like it kinky, the roll cage won't. <laughs> yeah, no, not today. <laughs> so basically, you, you, you put the tube through. Yep. That sits in that saddle there. Yep, you've got a nice um, little saddle down here. And what happens, that saddle just holds the end of the tube. Yep. So the tube sits inside the uh, die here. Yep. Um, you put a little bit of WD on it. And the just... WD actually allows it to slide around the pipe, yeah? Yeah, if you don't put WD on it, what you'll find is it can pinch the tube in a different place and then you'll get a completely different bend. And you're fighting it as well, yeah? You don't want to fight it. No. Life's hard enough. <laughs> That's it. Right. goes down, lock in your three quarter This tube. is all in. This now still moves. Yep. So you can put that in and out if you want to. Okay, yep. Yeah. So we just, we only want to go on the very end. Um, so what you can do, you just bend, put, move the wheel around. Yep. That's not locked in. We can still move it. Yep. It just okay. helps keep everything kind of tight. Perfect. So. What you'll do now, you'll pull this this handle towards you. This one, yeah. Yep. And that lock lock in. That's it. Let go. Go forward a bit. That drops into a tooth. Yep. Yeah. Now on this side is a a hand lock. Yep. So if you pull the handle round, it will drop into that tooth. That's yep. it. Come all the way around because you'll need to get the next tooth. Okay. Keep going. Can you feel it? Getting tighter? Yeah, you feel the resistance now, yep. yeah. Now what you can, I'm not worried about it right now, but there's a pointer here. You can set them up on zero and then you can do an exact do degree, the, yep. You can do the degree wheel as well if you want to. But we're not playing that game. You don't need to worry about that. Right, so if you walk back that way. Cool. Yeah, you take the handle. I was worried about the pin coming out, but he's all right, is he? Uh, actually, no. Come out, sorry. That's right. 
well spotted. <laughs> Go back that way. Keep going. Sorry, buddy. That's all right, don't worry. I was always told if you see something that doesn't look right, rather you say than afterwards some idiot goes, well, I saw that earlier. Yes. Oh, brilliant. Well, I broke my arm because you two saw it earlier. <laughs> you pull him out for a sec. Murr, 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 murr. Just like that, eh? That'll do. Right. right, let's start that one again then. Let's go back to there. Who's up for round two? He's in. He's locked. Bring the one round. Right. Yeah. That's it. Take it away. Yep. How far do you want me to far go? Far enough. That's it. Right. Yeah, now come. You've got to walk it this way towards oh, me. Okay. All right, ready? Yep. Keep going. You'll feel it get tighter. That's yeah. it. Now go back round again. You get no, it's only one click at a time. Wow. Doesn't even feel like you're doing anything, does it? No. Does okay. with a, yep, does with the two inch stuff. And how many am I going for? We're going for about 60 degrees on the wheel. Keep going? Yep. You can tell me when to stop. Yeah, just keep going. I'll let you know when. I gotta get myself one of these. You have to ask Santa. I'm gonna ask Bailey. <laughs> Yeah. That's it. Keep going? Yep. Yeah, keep going. Sorry. That's all right. And again. Now obviously this is a long way down the tube where we yep. cut this off. But you can see that's still not quite enough yet. Okay. Keep going. Yep, please. And again, and again. This is, this wasn't zero to start no, with, but point. it was roughly 60 yep. degrees when we did it before. Yeah, yep. so you can just. Follow that curvature nicely. Yeah, yeah. you just eye it up really, see what it looks like. Looks pretty close to me. Right, now how do I go about taking this off? Right, because you have a lock on the wheel, yep. yeah, because you get a certain amount of spring back on the tube. Yep. So obviously that, that little bit there, yeah. you can take that out. Yeah. If you let the handle go, you'll see how much it springs back. Wow. Okay. It's almost three degrees, Yep. which is quite a lot. When you're trying to do them all precisionly, precision, you know, those three degrees will make a big difference to the, to the way the whole thing fits together. So okay, what we'll do with that one, we'll just release that handle now. Yep. So this is free of the teeth. Yep. Okay. And he comes back round to our original position. Yep. And pull that one out. Woo! And that is how you make a bend. And hopefully, if we get this bit here, with a little bit of ingenuity and awesomeness from Craig. Well, they're a bit, they're different lengths, but you'll see there. We have exactly the same contour. Yep. And now we need to do a bit of precision sharpening. Yep, and then what we do is we'll draw the line so we'll copy this tube to this one and that will give us what we need for the door pillar. Perfect. Cool. We built the rest of the cage in the same way we built the rear, keeping as much of the original structure as possible, grinding off joints we didn't need and test fitting frequently. Without Craig's Bailey Bender, we wouldn't have got close to finishing the cage in one day, which is actually what happened. Guys, Craig at SVG is an expert at building roll cages. Please take into consideration that what we did today is no way a representation of what SVG do. SVG have helped me out here and Craig has gone above and beyond to make a cage that looks right. I cannot ensure in any way, shape or form that this cage would support a big collision or an impact. It is therefore a decorative roll cage. Although, in my opinion, some cage is better than no cage. Have you ever done anything that's mental before? No. That's but awesome. It certainly isn't it? ticks a few of the boxes. Yeah. It's, uh, it's pretty mental as it goes, but it's a good, good one. It's going to be good to see. What do you think for the amount you've achieved today? Like, yeah, really good. Yeah. yeah. No, I think it's nice. It's nice to work on a project like this. Um, it's a little bit off the off the wall. It's a bit, yep. it's a bit strange, but 
uber cool as well. I see. You don't you know, get much cooler than that, do you? Really? No. No, no you don't. It's it's something else. Something special. Please go to our channel homepage and click on the playlist to watch more Hard Up Garage videos. If you like what we're doing, click on that subscribe button. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe, and you can also help us by leaving a comment and click the like button. Please share this episode on social media with your friends and family. But while you're there, why not follow us at Hard Up Garage on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. If you follow us on social media, you'll see when we've got brand new videos for you lovely people. And don't forget to visit hardupgarage.com where you can get some background on what we do and buy some of our much loved merchandise. Here is a list of all the wonderful sponsors who help me and my guys make this crazy idea a reality. Thank you to each and every one of you lovely people. Hopefully you'll join us again as we work hard to get this project underway. Pun intended and bye for now. But remember guys, don't eat yellow snow. Thank you.